two carts worth of stuff. I'll show it a little closer. You should get at least a sense. Eight track player, Atari, Sony Betamax, Commodore, TI, some IBM portables, an Apple IIe, where is it? Oh, right here. Co a cocoa box for no reason. Awesome, awesome shit. And what'd you get, Justin? A couple uh, tuners? Two receivers and a uh, Shure microphone. Bunch of projectors. We're just starting to dig. I gotta see what this thing is. Tape recorders. Uh, I don't know. More projectors. Uh, there's a mix of stuff. Sewing machines, gotta see what that is. Camera stuff, Nikon, Zenith. Whoa. Um, oh, what, holy cool. crap, what is that thing? I don't know, a Miranda? I have no, never heard of it. You gotta check it out. Ultrasonic camera stuff. This is a fake thing, this is stuff, this is things. Another Kodak, somebody had a ton of camera stuff. You see there's a bag behind you here too. Yeah, I saw that. That's okay, bad. sewing machine. Old record player, adding machine, freaking Morse code. That's cool. Uh, oh, TI. Check that out. Record players. Uh, oh boy, a Tandy Color computer box. Wrecked to hell. This is something. I forget what movie that is. So, oh, that's. Yeah, poles. So this is sweet. Sweetness. So, what do you got so far? Um, I just found what this. Is that thing? I don't know, Baldinet. Bal I have no Balola. idea. Yeah, Rolly, though. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, you're checking that out. Yeah, oh, there's a. Like, you saw the lens. Yeah. I think that goes to like a Nikon camera that might be. Oh, you got a box of camera stuff. Yeah. Oh, sweet, dude. Yeah. Oh, look at the lens. That's yeah. like a zoom. Oh, look at down there. There's an Apple. That's an Apple something. Two, two e. Oh, whoa. Oh, that pops out? Yeah. Oh, man, now I don't know how to get it back. I'd be real careful. Yeah. You might sometimes you have to push in on the hinge or something. So just obviously... Okay. There's this over here, too, bud. Oh, I got it. Yeah, I saw that. Uh -huh. um, That's Kodak, which I'm... I'd like to see what this RCA Victor thing is. Bit of a closer look at my take. Um, I sp we spent $330. I spent $300, my son spent $30. Uh, I got the TI 994A, dirty. Uh, there's a box, I don't know if anything's in the box. There are a bunch of games. That's not worth a ton. Um, these are just some extra booklets, Atari 400 stuff. Does have the power source. If it's working, it might be worth close to a hundred. Uh, box of stuff, a Sony Walkman. Uh, that one's really heavy. These things can be worth something. This is a tape player. A couple of heat kit things. Uh, this seems to be a power supply. This seems to be a thing with lots of knobs and dials and stuff. Hopefully worth 150 or so. This is a Viewmaster projector. I actually got it because of these things. Check this out. Johnson & Johnson, how to rinse, how to brush, how to floss. And the projector does work. It actually has a light bulb in it. So I thought these were cool. Someone was trying to sell one for 40. I don't think it's sold. This thing, I don't actually, again, know what it is. There's a small chances Heath kit. It's obviously some kind of like project board. All oh, the switches, man. I thought it's just for the switches. This thing is just a Seagate hard drive, actually old school. I mean, it's heavy as hell and big as hell. This thing is so cool. This is a stereo 8-track player. It's portable. It's solid state. It's from Sears. This is uh, some kind of IBM portable. 
you know, portable. Apple 2E, it is enhanced, which will make you more money. It at least powered on in terms of the light came on. Uh, I got it with two disk drives. If it's working, it could be worth 200. My son got these two receivers, a Fisher 160 and uh, another Fisher 175. And he paid 30 for these and a microphone. Uh, some software, this is Windows 3.0, 3.1. Uh, in box, Channel Master 8 transistor radio, when they used to brag about how many transistors were in there. It's new in box, it's, it's not new actually, because this has got crap on it, but it's in box. So in this bag is this thing, this IBM PC convertible, I think it's a 5140. It's It's got some issues here, I haven't tried to power it on. The bag is pretty sweet, and there was some stuff in here. So there you go. A manual, so that's really good. Power supply, it looks like, which is definitely good if it works. Strap, uh, and I think, that, yeah, there's a couple of discs. So that the, yeah, startup discs, which should be very useful. We have the startup disc, the manual, the power supply. So that could be worth a bit. And then these bad boys, Sony Betamax. So this is a Betamax video recorder. And I'm thinking, and I was hoping this might happen. There looks like there's a tape in there, which is great. Look at this friggin' strap. This is worth $100. Uh, I don't know. Stuff. Batteries. Okay. Betamax player. Um, the door, actually, I have the door. It came off, but I have it. Um, I think I plugged it in and it lit up. So, I mean, that's sweet. I think those could be worth $75 to $100 each. We also got this. Common or PC-10. Again, I think I plugged it in and it lit up. Uh, again, I didn't do anything else. It's really dirty. Pretty rare, so could be worth 100 some. All right, so I'm gonna look in this box. Like paperwork. Actually, oh, interesting. Some cables and maybe some programs. There is that extra paperwork and stuff that was in there. So there's some of the manuals. This is for the tape recorder, but there isn't one basic reference guide. This is the manual for that logo. And then, I don't know if these are homemade. They're clearly not store-bought. But Alphabet's Boa Alley. Clones, Music Maker, Touch Typer. And this would not be the official version, but that's in State Capitals. It looks like this might have been from a school. Betamax hooked up to a screen. There's a broken tab. So it appears to be working. What time it is? Oh boy. IBM Personal System 2 Model P70-386. Uh, it partially works. Keyboard folds down. This is actually kind of sweet. This thing folds down. Uh, you can pull the screen out at an angle. Disk drive pops out, and you'll see it does boot with some issues. So it says starting MS DOS. Uh, Hi Mem is starting extended memory. Then there's some error messages. Directory command. It gives a bunch of things. I I I know dangerously little about this. Got the TI994A set up, plugged in. So you can see that turned on, it's ready. And you can go basic. Really good at this. I'm gonna let uh, one go past. I already hit the wrong one. Ooh, destroyed my building. Nice job, David. <laughs> Pretend I got that wrong on purpose. Whoa, asteroids. I think I'm in trouble. Not for now. Oh, shit. Uh, is, is less than. Oh, right on target. Seven times eight is 56. This should be another double. 
Okay. Sweet graphics. Three. So I gotta add a cross. So I'm that tiny little blue thing there. And I'm trying to get the cheese. Pressing the arrow keys, I believe. Oh, oh man, is the cat gonna get me? Oh, he is. Oh man, that bastard. <laughs> I only barely understand what's happening here. I theoretically park this here. Written a simple program. Seven. Wow, it worked. Trying to load from a cassette. It's a music game. Awesome noise. All right, so data okay. So maybe run. Let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. Music maker. Holy sh crap. It loaded. So I'm about to try out the uh, Commodore PC-10. I have it hooked up to a Tandy monitor. Here goes nothing. So that's no scan code from keyboard. That can't be good. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to read a disc even though I don't think there's anything in there. Boot disc failure. This is a bad sign. Friggin' smoke. Damn it. So I got it outside. Um, there's the scorch marks which correspond to the power supply. I will have to sell it as is. It has two uh, five and a quarter drives. It doesn't have a hard drive. I think that would be there. It has an extended RAM card. PC game control adapter. And this is for the monitor. The 1985 Commodore PC combined board. Smoke still lingers in the air. You can smell it. You probably can't see it. Um, I am going to try the Apple IIe, the enhanced one that I got. Nervous, to say the least. I'm going to try a bootleg copy of Super Taxman 2. Yeah, okay, so that's good. If you've never played this, this is a, probably the best version of Taxman. Oh yeah, there we go. Stole this from uh, the Beatles, obviously. Don't know how they got away with that. I'll show you a cartoon. Yeah, that's not great. Oh god, Pac-Man's dying. Oh, perishing. He's okay. This is my favorite level. I love these boxes here. Because you obviously had to go in here. There's only one way out. And you know, with two hands, it's a lot easier. Oh, crap. This is a look inside. Uh, this is, I'm pretty sure, the joystick. Super serial card. 1981. This, I, I think, is RAM. Again, it working, so that's fantastic. This Sears stereo 8-track and radio player is the coolest thing that you will ever see. It is a portable cube of coolness. Uh, you're going to see that it actually does work. What's cool about this, though, is you can split it into the two halves. There is a relatively long power cord that lets you put the two speakers further apart. That way you get the stereo sound. We'll try the radio first. Tape, and you put in, of course, Donny Asma, because who doesn't love Donny? So it sounds good, it's not distorted. Go away, little girl. Great song. So unfortunately, this is, uh, I had to fix this. <laughs> No, uh, it, there was no volume. I went in to try to look at it. I couldn't fix it, so this is this is a loss. The Sony Walkman, the WM2, is not working right. I could hear the motor going. The belt was definitely dead. It's broken and gummed up, so I'm gonna try to replace it. So I did get this thing working, and it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, rocking out to the Mormon Tabernacle. Hopefully they're not litigious. That's a pretty good find. That could be worth something. Listen to that IBM bag. It's pretty cool. It's got the logo, a bunch of big pockets. The zippers are actually good, nice and clean. Uh, it does open up, and you can put, you could definitely put a laptop in there. Uh, so that's pretty good. This is what I believe is a breadboard trainer. 
for electronics. It does have some components, as you can see here. I do think it works, but I know very little about it. And it has a plug, a blue LED, and you can see that that changes in how it's going. That's changing like how much it blinks and stuff. So these do, some of these knobs have more of a change than others. So I think it's working, all the switches go. It's really kind of cool. It's so cool, but I don't know what it is. I think it's a ham radio, but I don't even begin to know how to test it or power it on. It hooks up to this power supply, but I'm just leaving it alone. I'm gonna try to sell it as is. It's so, so far out of my knowledge base. So I've got less than a day to go for most of these. Only two bids so far, but lots of watchers. 25 watchers on the Sony Walkman, 26 on the IB, uh, IBM PC convertible, um, 11 watchers on the System 2, uh, 25 watchers on the Vintage Commodore, 7 on the 8-track player that actually has a bid for 37, and that PC 10, which was the one that went up in smoke, it has a bid of 75. Uh, only two, two watchers on the Betamax, um, 10 watchers on that training uh, breadboard, uh, the Apple I put up a little bit later, it's got three watchers. Texas Instruments stuff has one watcher. So as you can see, there was a lot of interest in these items, a lot of watchers. And so here's what sold from highest to lowest. The IBM Personal Systems 2 sold for $315. The uh, IBM Convertible Model 5140 sold for $200. The Apple IIe Enhanced sold for $195. The non-working Commodore computer with smoke damage, $152. The Sony Walkman went for $132, unbelievably. The Betamax went for 127 but stay tuned. The Texas Instrument lot sold for almost 100 The 8-track player from Sears sold for 91 They I sold the ham radio on Facebook for $75. Uh, the prototyping board sold for 61 The Windows 3.1 sold for $50. Uh, Apple Disk Drive sold for 38 The Seagate hard drive sold for 25 The IBM Manual sold for 22 the IBM bag, which was cool, sold for only about 19 and then the two discs sold for $13.50 each. So that was a total sales of $1,629 with about $1,125 profit, taking off eBay fees and the original $300. But, of course, there's going to be issues. So that Betamax arrived, and the guy says, well, you know, it's not a super Betamax. It's just a regular Betamax. Uh, and again, I listed it based off another thing, and indeed, I listed this uh, super one. And so he says, you know, I'm thinking about I want a refund. You didn't send me what uh, you had listed. Um, then he says, well, at least I'll try it out. And he tells me it stops working. And so I ended up having to give him a full refund. The stranger thing was with that Sears 8-track player. Two months after uh, the person had purchased it, he uh, messages me saying, hey, you know what? There's no head in here. It doesn't work. And I'm like, there's a head in there. And he's like, nope, there's no head in there. And I'm like, there has to be. Is it, you know, did, is it rattling around inside? Is it in the box? Did it fall out? Um, you know, you saw the video. The video shows it working. And so after initially asking for a refund, he just stopped texting me and, and didn't ask for anything further. That was kind of strange. So the only things that didn't sell yet are the beta movie camera, which actually does work. It's got that cool Sony case. Those kind of homemade copies of the Texas Instruments uh, games didn't sell, which kind of was a bummer. Most unbelievably, those Johnson & Johnson outer brush and floss uh, reel-to-reels haven't sold yet. So in the end, after taking off the lost money for refunding on the Betamax, my final profit was about $975. So that's pretty good. Again, and I don't do this for profit because, quite frankly, if you put in all the time and work I did to clean these up, test them, list them, pack them, which is a pain, you know, ship them, I put in at least 40, 50 hours, so I'm making something like $20 an hour, which is not, you know, something you get rich off of. The main reason I do this is just the excitement. I love this, these vintage computers and electronics, uh, the thrill of the hunt, finding this, you know, room with all these things in it was crazy going through it. I mean, my son and I probably spent two hours there sorting through stuff. Um, it's so great to see these old things, and I know that people really value them, so it's exciting for me to get them into some other people's hands. So it's, again, yeah, I, I'm not going to do it for free, but I definitely do it for the love of it as well. So thank you for watching. Please comment, and please also consider subscribing. Thanks.